is evolution happening right now? Cool, good question. Okay, so you guys should already know what evolution is. And what is it? Our definition of evolution is evolution is the change in the gene pool of a population over time. Now, when we think about evolution, these kinds of pictures will probably come to mind. Have a look. There we have a little monkey changing into a bigger monkey, changing into a uh, not so modern man, changing into a more modern man, and it keeps developing. Or maybe something like this, that is a fossil. Because as we know that over time, scientists have found fossils and found other kinds of evidence that have shown us that us as human beings did not just pop up like Lamarck said in his creation creationism, but in fact, like Darwin said, we all came from common ancestors and we evolved, we changed into something. Okay. Now, because of that, because our thoughts go back to prehistoric people or go back to fossils and stuff, there are a lot of misconceptions about evolution. A lot of people are not exactly sure, you know, exactly what's going on with evolution. Let's have a look at these misconceptions. They are that evolution has never been observed by someone in the flesh, in the present, okay? Evolution happened a long time ago to produce modern life forms, and life forms, we are, the, we are perfect. We are as we will always be, and we are not going to evolve anymore. And another one is that evolution has stopped now. Okay, now these misconceptions are just that, misconceptions, that's not true, okay? Obviously, we cannot necessarily see evolution happening right here in front of us, but it is still happening. Okay, and we're just not too sure of it. So what I want to do is I want to look at an example that proves to you evolution is in action every day, even though we are not aware of it. And for this example, I'm going to use um, a population of insects. And these populations, these, these insects sometimes become resistant to insecticides. So we know whether it is a population of mosquitoes that are biting us and transferring diseases, or a population of insects that are eating farmers' crops, okay, we get irritated by it. Yeah. And we spray them with chemicals to kill them. Now some of these insects manage to evolve so that they are no longer killed by these chemicals. Let's see how they do it. Let's have a look at this picture. So we have a population of insects and you can see some of them have the A gene and some of them have the B gene. Now for argument's sake, let's say the A gene insects are not resistant to the pesticides or the insecticides. So when they are sprayed with this chemical, they die. Some of them do live long enough to produce offspring, but the offspring will die. Mm. Okay. There are a few, possibly, with a mutated gene, and in our picture we called it gene B. Now this mutation could make the insect resistant to the insecticide. So when it is sprayed with it, it just kind of shakes it off and carries on with life. Now, what would happen over time is natural selection. So if you remember, it is survival of the fittest. So in this population, the mosquito with the gene B is the fittest mosquito because he can live, he can reproduce, he can produce offspring, and he passes his B gene down to his offspring, and they can reproduce and reproduce and reproduce, etc., etc. Okay, so eventually over time, what do you think our population is going to look like in terms of genes? Most of them will have the B gene. Nice, you are a scientific mind, Amanda. <laughs> right, have a look at the, at the picture now. So you'll see on the left-hand side, we have a population with a certain A to B gene frequency, A being the greater amount. Due to environmental circumstances, that, that is our insecticides that are being sprayed, um, the environment favors the B mosquitoes. The B mosquitoes are the fittest, so natural selection takes its place and eventually our population gene frequency has changed to where there are less A, eventually probably no A mosquitoes or whatever the insects are, and a lot of B. So natural selection of the stronger individual over the weaker ones drove this process of evolution. So we say the insecticide was a selective pressure which brought about evolution in the population. Okay, making mm -hmm. sense so far? Yeah. Do you see how it changed over time? Mm -hmm. Now the reason we can, we can use this as an example is because mosquitoes or insects in general have very short lifespans. So it is very easy for us in our lifespan to see many generations of the same organism. That's why we were not able to observe 
our evolution because by the time we died and the next kind of, or, or the time that the, the primates died that were eventually, you know, evolving into what we know as mm. our, our, us, humans, um, our, yeah, it, they couldn't stay alive long enough, obviously, to watch it. They would die out. So we, as an external species, we can look at this and we can see the process of evolution happening. Now, what is important to remember is that these little individual mosquitoes did not change, okay? There wasn't a mosquito who had the A gene one day and then the next day he had the B gene, okay? It is something that happens to the population in general, not to the individual in the population. So let's look at a few points that are very important for you to remember. When the population was evolving, the ratio of different genetic types in that population was changing. Each individual within the population did not change. The frequency of insecticide resistant individuals increased, but the insects themselves did not change from being susceptible to insecticides to being resistant in their lifetime. One organism does not turn into another organism. It is by the process of what? That, that this ratio changed. What is, what is Darwin's theory? What is his process? Something about selection? What kind of selection? Oh, I don't know what to answer. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Do you know the answer? <laughs> the third red and delays, like, are we supposed to answer? I guess that means that we'll just wait for an answer from Kat. Okay. Should we? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. I'll give you the answer. Natural selection. And if you guys at home didn't get that, I'm very upset with you because we've been going over it for weeks. Okay, so by natural selection, survival of the fittest, it were the, the bee insects or the gene B insects that could survive long enough to reproduce. That could survive long enough to reproduce and have um, offspring that had the same B gene. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Okay, right. So guys, just also quickly to bring it back to PK's discussion on uh, tattoos and body piercings. Think about how Darwin said, it is a genetic thing that changes us, that evolves us. Okay, it's not like Lamarck said, with the giraffe where his neck stretches, therefore his baby giraffe will have a mm. long neck. Okay, it's the same thing with the tattoos. If you have a tattoo, doesn't mean your child is going to be born with a tattoo. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so this is why Darwin is our father of evolution and his evolutionary definition of the changing of the gene pool in a population over time is what we need to look at. And to sum this all up and get back to answer, yes, evolution is happening right now. And a little bit later, hopefully we can get into more, more details about that. How do bacteria become resistant to antibiotics? Okay, cool, that's a good one because we often have to take antibiotics mm. for different kinds of sicknesses. So if a, a sickness is caused by a bacteria, we can treat it, we can kill it by using antibiotics. Now, have a look at the screen. You'll see there's a picture of a girl and she's coughing and you can see her face is in pain and she doesn't look like she's having a good time at all. And that's because she has TB or tuberculosis. So very quickly, what do you guys know about TB? It's that it can infect anyone. It's, it's an airborne disease. You can get it if someone near you coughs or does anything. Good, good. Okay, so it's an airborne disease. It's a bacteria. And if someone has it and they cough, obviously <coughs> they cough this bacteria out and it stays in the air and you can inhale it into your lungs. And it primarily affects the lungs, lungs but it can move into other areas of the mm. body. Now, this bacteria is what we are going to use, what we are going to look at to see how they become resistant to antibiotics. And again, we are going to be seeing how they evolve. And through this evolution, it can actually be a bad thing for us because bacteria can evolve into stronger bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. And we have to find new ways to cure these bacteria. Okay, oh. so TB is a disease caused by the bacterium Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Yo. Okay, classic uh, life sciences biological name. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down, learn how to spell it because we're all about spelling as well. Okay, now we can use an antibiotic to treat TB. But, long ago, 
when they eventually found a way to treat this TB. Because you must remember, TB, you get coughing, your chest is sore, your throat is sore, it's horrible. And if you don't catch it soon enough, or you don't treat it, or you don't take your antibiotics properly, it can actually kill you. And back in the day, before we had all this fancy equipment and we could do lots of cool experiments and stuff, we didn't have the, the, the medication to treat it, and many, many people would actually die from TB. So eventually, as technology progressed, we found a way to kill these antibiotics, or to kill these bacteria with a specific antibiotics. But these guys were really, really clever, and a new type of bacteria appeared, which was resistant to the antibiotics normally used. And they called this bacteria multi-drug resistant TB. Okay, so there's our little picture. Okay, there, it's Not evil. It's, that picture makes me think of that, oh, it's gonna come, it's gonna kill us. So we have to, you know that, those ads? Well, yes, exactly, because it's a germ, it's a bacteria, yeah. okay, it's gonna kill you. Okay, so the, the scientists had to go back to their labs and they had to do some more experiments and find a new antibiotic that would kill this strong, mean strain of TB. And they found it and they could treat people with it and it was great, everyone was happy. If they got TB, they took antibiotics and they would get better. But these guys were very clever yet again and a new one appeared actually in 2006 in KwaZulu-Natal. A lot of you know KwaZulu-Natal, you live there, whatever. So, you know, this happens locally, this is happening now. And this strain of the bacteria was called extremely drug resistant TB and yeah. you can see this guy looks a little bit friendly but um, he's supposed to look very scary. <laughs> okay, he's supposed to look very scary and luckily we've got some easy easy names here to use we don't have those crazy names again. Okay so the scientists had to go back again to to create a new antibiotic but can you see how this bacteria is evolving how it's changing? So in the initial population, just like in our insect population, there would have been one or two bacterium that had a gene that made it resistant to the antibiotic. And those were the little organisms that could reproduce. And you need to remember that, that bacteria produce at a very, very quick pace. They produce asexually. So that means they don't have to find a mate to, to pair up with and produce. They just sort of split mm. okay so because they 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 produce so quickly and so easily we we are able to see this evolution in action happening and this is why it can happen so quickly and, and it's actually quite a quite a threat for us okay so um it's the the bacterial popula populations have evolved and it took only a few bacteria which possessed a probable mutation in one gene which gave them resistance to the antibiotics just like our insect population and as I've said because bacterial populations reproduce so quickly and asexually did not take very long before there were significant numbers of resistant bacteria in the population okay so as the antibiotic was killing off the non-resistant bacteria the resistant bacteria just grew and grew and grew and grew and then that antibiotic was useless, useless. and we had to find a new one okay so so that's how and um, how bacteria can become resistant to, to antibiotics. And that is also why it's very important to make sure when you take your antibiotics, if the doctor says take it for seven days, you take it for seven days. Okay, if you skip, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get to that as well. And I'm gonna be chatting to you guys on Facebook tonight about why, you, why it's so important that you need to take your antibiotics. So I want you to, to start thinking about that. Um, yeah, so, so just, just to finish it off, just like in the insect population, it was the insecticide that forced evolution to happen. What has forced evolution to happen here with our TB bacteria? The it's the antibiotics. So we call the antibiotics the selective pressure that drove the evolutionary change.